Hi there guys, it's Chris here with SelfMadeNewbie.com and in this video we're going to go through the best wetsuits currently out there today. Now I've kept this list as comprehensive as possible, narrowing it down to my absolute favourite, top 5 picks, so no matter what you're looking for, there'll definitely be something in this list for you. So before we jump in, drop a like and subscribe and hit the bell to be updated with new videos. Alright, so as usual, I'm going to skip the fluff and just jump right into my recommendations. If you want to confirm what they are, you can go down in the description there and check out that list to also ensure you get the lowest price. Alright, so kicking it off with my overall personal favorite, and this is the Finisterre New World. So this is a really solid option if you just want an all-round solid pick, taking into consideration durability, versatility, and price as well. It's the perfect jack of all trades suit, ideal for swimming, surfing, paddle boarding, or anything else you might want to do. And best of all, it's a sustainably made garment from a company with certified B Corp credentials. Now it is a bit of an investment, and unless you frequently spend time in the water, it might be harder to justify the price. Um, but I don't think casual swimmers or occasional paddle boarders would seriously consider splashing out on this one. Uh, but if you like spending time in open waters in a professional capacity or otherwise, this suit is almost a must, especially if you also care about the environment. So in a nutshell, the pros of this one, why I like it, sustainably made by a B Corp company, long sizes available, double needle blind stitch construction for that chafe free swimming experience, and it also just has a really nice premium feel. The cons, it holds onto water a little bit and is therefore a little bit slower to dry than other synthetic fabrics. And uh, it also might take a while for the material to loosen just because of that um, unique material. Now, if you do want something quick drying, the next one on my list is gonna be my recommendation for the best quick dryer, and that is the O'Neill Hyper Freak. So when they launched in 2014, O'Neill's Hyper Freak wetsuits quickly gained a reputation for really unparalleled levels of flexibility and warmth, but a lifespan that was much shorter than conventional wetsuits. Now fast forward to today and the Hyper Freak range has evolved to become more flexible than ever but is now much more resilient than the earlier iterations. While a super snug fit is vital if your wetsuit is to do its job correctly, it can feel restrictive if the neoprene prevents natural movement. Now O'Neill's Technobutter 3X branded neoprene has an amazing amount of four-way stretch that even in the thickest varieties enables free body movement and does not hamper paddling, pop-ups, or any movement you might make on the wave. It is also relatively soft to the touch and far easiest to get on and off than most front zip wetsuits. Despite being much more robust than it used to be though, Techno Butter is still easier to damage than conventional neoprene, so do take extra care with this one. So the pros in a nutshell, it's got unparalleled flexibility, very warm and comfortable and super quick drying of course. The cons are, as I just mentioned, this one is a little bit easier to damage. Now the next one on my list is my recommendation for the best wetsuit for triathlons and this is the DHB Aeron Wetsuit 2.0. So the DHB Aeron is a good quality wetsuit for an excellent price as well with an excellent range of sizes. The three quarter length makes it easier to get on and off than a full length, making it especially well suited for triathlons. That said, open water swimmers, suppers, and other water sport enthusiasts would also enjoy the extra buoyancy and reduced drag that this offers. It's not as well insulated as standard neoprene wetsuits, however, it dries quickly, so it's not too heavy to carry around with you after you've been in the water. And the buoyancy in this is also very noticeable, so it's definitely a strong selling point for most people. The only downside was the confusion around the sizing, so my advice would be to use the chart and check your measurements and still go up one size. The pros in a nutshell, made from sustainably made Yamamoto rubber, available in a wide range of sizes and fits, impressive buoyancy and speed gains with this, and also quick to put on and take off. The cons are, again, be very mindful of the sizing, and it is less insulated than other neoprene versions. The next one on my list is my recommendation for the best premium option, and this is the Quicksilver Highline Pro. So for a premium option, this is my best pick, I would say, uh, designed with the Pro in mind rather than like a casual beginner. There's a lot of innovation in this, an attempt to pack the warmth of a three millimeter into a one millimeter, for example, which in theory gives warmth with unparalleled comfort and freedom of movement. So a one millimeter suit feels like really wearing Speedos in comparison to a three or four mil. Hand sculpted in Japan from only nine panels of Japanese limestone neoprene, the Highline Pro has no stitched seams and no zipper, saving weight and removing any chafing points. 
What Quicksilver has done is create two entry systems to uh, suit regular and goofy foot surfers. The ideal being to reduce water flush during wipeouts by placing the entry on the non-lead side. The result is a sub kilowatt one millimeter suit that is still rated uh, for 13 to 18 degree waters, although there's an emphasis on high intensity and short sessions to ensure you do stay warm. That said, if you want the ultimate surface suit, just like the pros, then this is definitely a solid option. The technology in this makes it really so that there's nothing else really like it out there. So the pros in a nutshell, lightweight, still warm, cutting edge design, super stretchy. The cons, not a traditional design and also premium option so this is not going to be the cheapest now the final one on my list is going to go to my recommendation for the best eco-friendly option and this is the patagonia r3 ulex fz full suit if you are looking for an eco-friendly option this brand pride it's prides itself on green credentials and its ulex line of wetsuits ditch the toxic neoprene of traditional suits and instead uses a plant-based derivative for most elements the suit itself is very well constructed and with a 4.5 millimeter of neoprene around your chest and back to keep you warm this suit is ideal for use in the autumn and spring and will even do the job over winter if you avoid seriously cold days this is the second iteration of the ulex neoprene which patagonia claims is 20 percent more flexible than the original now while the r3 is definitely stretchy enough to allow you to move relatively unhindered it's not quite as flexible as others on the market However, unlike their more elastic rivals, Patagonia's greener ethos means their wetsuits are designed to last as long as possible, so this will still be going strong when others may have stretched out. The front entry zip is robust and protects the wearer from any horrible flushing moments, while all the seams are triple glued and then taped inside, as well as sealed on the outside for just excellent tightness or water tightness. The hard wearing suit protects knee pads and ankle cuffs guard against damage from your board and anything else you might come across. Now, while the R3 is definitely not cheap, you'll undoubtedly get more years out of it than other, a lot of other suits on the market. They also come with a lifetime warranty to make that price easier to swallow. So in a nutshell, very warm, environmentally friendly, and also a solid construction. The cons are a little bit tricky to get on and off, and also the high price, but taking it into consideration, you do get the lifetime warranty. Um, it kind of balances out. All right, guys, so hopefully there's something on that list for you. If you do want something eco-friendly, if you want to splurge, if you want something in between, hopefully I've included something there. If you do have any questions though, you can drop them down below. And if you found value in this video, uh, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.